guys. I'm back with the second part to the August tutorial Thursday. Yeah, I know we're in September, but... Shh. <laughs> this video is probably going to turn out to be a long one because it's quite going to be quite an in-depth one. But after um, seeing a thread, a post, a thread, um, in a YouTube Facebook group, I'm in lots of different crafting groups, crafting groups, junk journal groups, Facebook groups, Instagram groups, Twitter group, blah, 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 um, for different things. And on one of the YouTube groups, somebody posted a, um, like a, a help me kind of post saying that they were struggling doing tutorials. They found them very daunting to film a long tutorial all in one go. And a few people suggested, break it down. If you feel uncomfortable or, like myself, you tend to waffle too much about nothing, which I'm doing now, <laughs> break the videos down into chunks, smaller chunks. So that's what this video is going to be. It's going to still be the tutorial, but it's going to be broken down into little chunks. Hopefully that'll help rein me back waffling on. Apart from this little bit, because I'm telling you. But, right, here is your materials list. That's the word I was looking for in the last tutorial, where I kept wanting to say ingredients, and then I ended up with supplies. Well, I guess it is supplies, because you do need the supplies, but materials list. Um, For this video... Or this specific tutorial again we are going to make the music paper envelope but we are going to do this one today where we use the sewing machine and material to create this version of it which was the original version I just ran out of time last time to do that um, that's a ready-made tag um, I just added the brads actually no, that brad wasn't already on there, they are mine. Um, yeah, and I just have some um, little paper ruffles and material ruffles already sewn in there. It's falling apart already, I've used it that much. Depends how fragile your paper is. And also where I went wrong with the sewing machine and ripped through it anyway, I need to put some washi tape on. Now, my sewing on here... Oh gosh, I love this camera. I'm back to using the old phone for this because it's more reliable. <laughs> um, focus, yay. I've missed you so much. Anyway, get back. Stop babbling. <laughs> um, my sewing on this is a little wonky and all over the place. It's nowhere near straight. This is because this was before I made friends with the sewing machine and I was still frightened of it. So, <laughs> like you can see here, if I undo this, the sewing on this bottom part is nowhere near the edges it's in the middle it's not even straight actually i don't think i've glued it on straight well i didn't glue it straight because i didn't cut it straight anyway but anyway hopefully the sewing in this one will be a little bit more better i wouldn't say precise but better right so like i said we're going to do this one them are the ones that we did at the end of the last one well, them are the ones that I showed you the last one. That's the one we did at the end of the last one. Before we do this, what I will show you is with this one, I went down the four stamp route, four saw route, but I didn't use my stamp. I have a four stitching stamp, which I used on that one. This one I didn't. I used a pen. And all I did was just drew some lines and dots and then just did a couple of squiggly lines over it, which it's not great. But for anybody who doesn't have any four stitching stamps, but still like that stitched look, it's an alternative. Now, get back to this. Focus, focus, focus. This we will do at the end as a bonus. Okay, so. Materials list. <clears throat> for this video, you will need music paper. Obviously. Or, well, I say obviously, you might not want to use music paper, but you might still want to do this style envelope, so any paper you desire. For this, we are using music paper. You need some scissors, 
material scissors. Actually, these are the wrong scissors. Um, these are my material scissors. I apologise. So, yeah. Um, any scissors you would like to use, but I know a lot of people don't like using material scissors on paper and paper scissors on material. So, you know, you need some scissors for cutting material. Glue. Now, I am going today, I am actually going to try the glue stick method for material because the material is going to be sewn anyway. You probably don't need glue to glue the material down before you sew it. It'll depend on your sewing machine, but I like to do that anyway. Now, I use, I usually use Fabri-Tac, but as you can see, it's running very low and it's being very fussy when it does or doesn't come out. So I'm using the Beacon 3-in-1 at the moment. Um, you could use Art Glitter Glue. The reason I am not using that for this project is I am down to probably about here um, I don't know I'm I'm right down here somewhere in this and that again is temperamental so today I'm going to try using the uhu stick just to glue in the middle of the fabric to glue it to tack it into place really before we sew you will need material obviously if you want to do the no saw no like no material no saw version then go to the previous one so i have just chosen this i have no idea what sort of material this is this is a four by four inch square piece which is ideal size for what i'm doing again i am not going to give measurements because it will all depend on the size of paper you guys are using so you unfortunately you're gonna to have to work that out for yourselves um but yes, so I'm using a 4x4 four four inch square piece, a hole, uh, not a hole punch, sorry, a corner rounder, but again, that's entirely your choice. You don't have to round the corners of your envelope. Here. You don't have to round the corners of your envelope. You could just keep them as is. This is the little mini bonus one, but I didn't even do it on that one. I just left it as is. That is entirely up to you guys. You could angle your envelope like this to make it look more like an envelope shape, <laughs> except I went wrong at that side. Um, but you could do that, that's entirely up to you. Or again, like I said, you don't have to do it at all. That is entirely your preference, but this is how I'm doing it. You will need a ruler for tearing the paper. You may cut, you may trim. I prefer to tear. So you need a ruler. It doesn't have to be a metal one. It can be anything. Um, then you will need a tag. A ready-made tag. Or I have some scrap card. I'm going to make one on camera with you. You need the tag for this. This bit. But, like I said, I already had these ready-made. And I used a ready-made one in the no saw version. This I have cut literally minutes ago with my tag punch. But I'm going to use this scrap piece and do a tag with you on camera. Show you a nifty way of making a tag on camera. Because I understand people don't already have ready-made ones or don't have tag punches. Anyway, you need a brad to secure your tag because... In this version, it needs to be able to swing open. Alternatively, if you do not wish your tag to swing and you would just prefer to tuck it under, have it fixed permanently and tuck it under instead of it swinging outwards, when we come to the sewing part, and I will get to that, just sew directly across the top, but I'll get to that in the video. Otherwise, you need a brad split split pin I think people call them as well yep so you need a brad um, then you need some sort of scrap paper to create your little anchor this is part of some Amazon packaging that I've been tearing up and using because it's awesome and um, we're going to make that paper ruffle again Hopefully a little better this time than I did last time. 
so yep you need that and that is it and personal preference tea or coffee <laughs> so i hope i've covered everything so we shall now move on to the next part okay so the next part is your music paper um my paper has two different designs i know it's music but we'll call it a design it has two different designs on it because it's two different sheets of music this side the music sheet the music goes right to the edges obviously not these bits but it they're all the same on this side however this one is shorter than these so now it's up to you to decide which side you want to use because we're going to again use these these lines going down this way not this way these lines as a guide so if I want to do this side I would line that up and tear down there but I'm actually going to do this side just to make it easier and this is all we're going to do so whatever paper music paper you have you will have a border around it doesn't matter how big or small your sheet of paper is you will have a border around it and if you turn it sideways no can't do it with that one sorry <laughs> that one does go that way you will have lines going down as well as your music going across you will have these lines going down oh actually yeah it goes that way anyway you tear around the edge so that's what we're going to do in this part and don't throw your scraps away because you can even use the scraps off this to create your anchor on that I really 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 do need to get a grip on these tutorials I'm as you guys know new to this and I just as soon as I flick the camera on I know what I want to say I make these up beforehand to make sure I know it's going right I know exactly what to do I have a pad at the side of me with notes on reminding me what to say and then as soon as I flick record on the camera no everything just completely disappears right now this is another thing as well when you've got a piece like this this bottom bit here is completely blank there's nothing on it so now you decide whether you want to keep that or get rid of it and let's see we will keep it for this one it, this will depend on how wide your envelope is because it's going to be turned sideways and fold the envelopes going to be that orientation not that way so it all depends on how wide you want your envelope and that's about the same width as that so we will keep that bit on music paper is great for lining up okay scraps to one side in the bin whatever you want to do with them um, I keep them anyway, but like I said, you can use these to create the paper ruffles to then use as your anchor or like I've done here and just make paper ruffles with them anyway and you store them for a later date. I have, as I showed in the last video, I have a bag here that's got all my music scraps in, music paper scraps in, so I will put them in there now before I lose them because I'm not using them in this one. And I'll put that back up there and then I don't misplace it. Okie dokie. Right, so we actually do not need the ruler now. I don't think, I'll put it to one side anyway, but I don't think we need the ruler anymore. Right, and now you need to decide, obviously because we've decided to use this side, this is going to be the outside. So now this is going to be on the inside. You need to figure out where you want to fold. Which for me is easy. I always go off this top line here. I think. Let me see. 
I'm trying to keep it as close to this as I can because I know that that fit on there okay. But again, I don't want to give measurements because, like I say, everybody's envelopes are going to be different. Right, yes, yeah, so it is that one. So I'm going to fold up to that line there. This line going across here. I know it's not straight because it goes down like that, but line up with that. Like that. And then, as I showed before, I always like to try and leave a thumb's width gap. Or I usually do it that way with my thumbnail. Um, but yeah, and I think that works out at about half an inch. Yeah, doing it that way, it's approximately half an inch, if you want to be precise, the gap. But it doesn't matter, as long as you just leave a little gap. It really doesn't matter. So I think, and again, you can use these different things to line up with. And I think... I'll zoom you in a little bit. There, There is a music note here. And then there's one up here that I was looking at. So I think I'm going... Actually, I think that's too big. Or, if you've already done a project, you may line it up. It's actually too big. Mm. Um, material yes that would also help use your material so because obviously once it's closed you want your material to be on there but it also tucks under slightly that's too small too big I mean oh, yeah, too small it needs to be further up for my liking and then it's not even straight well it is it's straight enough and then no it was right I stand corrected, it was right. Okay, we'll stick with the original one. This is why I don't do measurements, it's all about how you visualise. Oh, sorry, I'm out of focus, aren't I? Uh, frame, not focus. Just play around, once you've got your envelope shape, just play around with it until you've got it to where you think you like it. And I'm just going to go for it there. That's it. Obviously try and keep it straight. Right, so this material is now going to go on here. However, we're going to cut some of it. So, approximately half like an inch and a quarter. It would have been an inch and a half, I would imagine, to begin with, because we fray the edges. But I'm not measuring. I'm going to eyeball it. So, I'm going to... Roughly centre it, with the flap down, roughly centre it, and then... Just cut around there. I'm just lining up the dots, and then if you're lucky enough, just tear it. And it doesn't always tear straight, but that doesn't matter. And then fray the edges. I like the frayed edge look. If you don't want to fray the edges, don't, by all means. This is your project. And it frays better in some directions than others. <coughs> I 
<clears throat> and again it doesn't matter whether it's straight or not Okay, I think that's enough for that bit anyway. Get rid of these little bits and then fray this one. Or not. Like I said, it frays better going one way, better going some ways than another. I think in this instance it's this way, yep. Although it doesn't really matter. Just chop them off a bit. Like I said before, many times over, when I film, nothing ever goes to plan, so this does not surprise me one little bit, nor will it anybody who's been around on the channel for a long time. I think that's satisfactory. Yes, I like that. Nowhere near straight, all over the place, but I like it, because... It's going in a junk journal, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect in a junk journal. Okay, so it tapers up a little bit there, so then I'm going to make this bit here the bottom. And like I said, it will tuck under a little bit. And then that bit, now which way do I like this? Do I like it? I think I prefer it that way. And that's that. Oh, hang on. Let's have a look. Actually, I think I prefer it that way. I do. I prefer it that way. This is where the glue now comes in. And you just literally want to run a bead of glue down the centre of your fabric. Whichever glue you use. Like I said, I'm going to try the Uhu method this time. Um, if you're using the be the um, Fabri-Tac, Beacons 3-in-1 or Art Glitter Glue, you only need a really tiny little piece because this is light fabric is this one. So the glue will show through. This one I got away with it because it was dark fabric. So bear that in mind. And where is my gluing book? That's there. Right under my nose. My gluey book. So, but I have seen Gail do this and I have seen Rachel at Roxy Creations do this with glue stick. So I am going to give it a go. So, because it is only just tacking it down anyway until we've sewn around it. Actually, that worked really well. And it doesn't show through. So just staying in the centre-ish. Not around the edges. My sewing machine will sew through. Mine will actually sew through Fabri-Tac once it's completely dry. Um, so I can't see there being any problems sewing through glue stick. It does sew through glue stick as well. Um, but I don't know about glue stick through material. <laughs> right now... And also, this is better because I've got time to manoeuvre, which I wouldn't have if I was using Fabri-Tac or Art Glitter Glue. So, I'm just eyeballing this, but I do want it to tuck under slightly. I think that's okay there. So, let's put that down. Righty-ho. Now, on other projects, the No Saw ones, once we've got the paper part of it down or even once we got the envelope made we glued this flap shut 
but as we're going to sew we don't do that we don't do that at all not yet that's pretty much the very last step well not very last but excuse me that's one of the last steps that we do what we do now is use the sewing machine and we are going this is why you need this not sewn oh before we do that sorry before we do that you need your scrappy pieces of material uh, paper or what whatever you're going to use to make your anchor because I'm going to s I didn't saw that actually what I did with that was made it sawed across it with the sewing machine and then glued it on so actually yeah I'm going to do that sorry I got ahead of myself there um, that's what I'm going to do so we'll just tear a piece off And just <clears throat> you could use scissors for this but I like the scruffy look not scruffy but tatty look could even use the ruler um, okay so where's my tag there it is although we're going to make one it's still that width I'm just going to line that up and then I know how I need to do this so I'm going to fold that back on itself I'm going to try and do this a little bit better this time and fold that back on itself and then that one next to it and then another one there oh that is perfect this time look at that guys perfect and I'm going to show you now something I neglected to show you properly on the last one because the old man came home I heard him come home actually as you can tell in the video when I shouted I'm filming and then he told me you're gonna to have to re-up love because Taylor will be home in a minute and that's when I went yeah I don't know I don't know if you heard what he'd said in the background but I got to this bit and then because I was kind of having a conversation with him I forgot to show you how I glued it together but yes yeah, so you make like your little concertina paper ruffle and then either Fabri-Tac art glitter glue or uhu um i'll show you how to glue it shut or you could just leave it as is and then just run across it with the sewing machine right so starting on the front where it's folded there where that bit folds onto the next bit glue just run some glue and then this one here not this bit where that bit folds on glue it and when you're using glue stick it doesn't always glue straight away and then that bit actually that hasn't stuck at all I don't think I'm using enough then flip it over and do the reverse ones so on them folds much easier just to whip across it with the sewing machine but I understand that some people don't, might not want to do that or might struggle holding it shut <clears throat> and that's going to be our anchor for that and I will just whip across there with the sewing machine oh sorry guys sorry 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 forget forgot to zoom like I said that will then go on the bottom there as our anchor and I am going to whip across it on the sewing machine just like I did there but not sew it to the page you can if you want if you're going to sew it to the page if you're going to ruffle it and then sew it to the page whilst you're sewing everything else just sew across the bottom don't sew in the middle sew across the bottom because you need this top part to be able to anchor your tag in so oh gosh I'm going to shut off now and take you over to the sewing machine for the next part. Okay guys, so we are over at the sewing machine. Um, I have a Singer Symphony sewing machine. I think it's a Singer Symphony 6. It's a V1, which I think is number 6, I'm not sure. Um, and it has all kinds of different stitches on, but I'm just going to use a... 
on the wing a zigzag stitch so yep we are on the zigzag and I'm just quickly going to sew across this the little paper ruffle we've just done so I'm going to get that somewhere in the middle and I am no expert with the sewing machine so please <laughs> don't cringe well you probably will cringe but you know a beigey brown coloured thread in the sewing machine which at the moment in time is perfect for this project so so there you go I've just zigzagged across it which has now tacked it down completely and then we'll save this for later okay so oh I'm really dreading doing this because like I said I am far from perfect when it comes to using the sewing machine let me just refer back to this envelope a minute to see what I did right so I rounded the corners before I sewed so I shall do that now this is entirely up to you guys but I am going to round the corners of my envelope flat Right, before you saw your envelope shut to make an envelope, you need it completely open like this to be able to sew this. Okay, so you get that somewhat in line. Like I said, I am not perfect, so, you know. And I stand up to sew anyway, so I can't see. Well, I can see, but not great. Okay. Come on, work. No. Oh. Could it help if I moved it out slightly? Well, that's new. My foot pedal's not working. Now that's just typical for me. There we go. I can't quite yet gauge the control, the foot pedal, the speed, sorry, of my foot pedal. Right, now I'm going to go do the gale trick, which is when you are zigzagging, when you get to the end, make sure your needle is on the left hand side in the in the project and on the left hand side before you turn. I'll show when it's finished why, but always make sure it's on the left hand side in the project before you turn to go the other way. It gives a very neat corner. Sorry guys, I hope this isn't too loud for you. Although I've, I've heard my sewing machine on camera before and I don't think it's that bad actually. Although my, my phone is quite close to it so I apologise if it is loud. then you know stop short and just go around once one stitch at a time this is something else I struggle gauging with at the moment as well because I'm relatively new to sewing I can't gauge how close or away my stitching is going to be to the edge of a project 
I know they say to line up with the middle of your foot, but I still haven't quite grasped it. I am a work in pro progress. <laughs> Never mind the project I'm doing, I'm the work in progress. And I will just backstitch. I don't really think it needs it, to be honest, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. Sorry, I've got a basket at the back of the sewing machine and it's catching on it. Okay, so I'll get that bit off. Pull. Make sure you've got plenty of thread hanging out the back. So that is now sewn in. Cool. I'll just trim some of these threads off. I don't mind threads hanging, but that is just a little bit long. <coughs> okay, so that's the... So that is this part sewn. So now for this bit, which you can actually do this after, but I'm going to do it now. Oh no, actually, I can do that after, it will make it easier. So now we're going to sew the envelope shut, basically. And start in one of the bottom corners, because that way you backstitch your bits at the bottom. And for this, I am going to do, what am I going to do? What did I do on here? Right, well, on here I did both straight stitch and zigzag stitch because I messed it up and it didn't look right. But I think, I'm just going to stick with a zigzag stitch. We're already set on that setting anyway, so I will stick with that. What are you doing? Oh, okay. I'm going to just turn off a minute, guys, because my bottom reel of thread is out. Back again, guys. I wish I'd have been videoing that because, seriously, I threaded the needle first time, no problem. Anyway, as I was saying, back to this, we will start sewing in this bottom corner and we will sew the envelope shut. So this is where you need to try and keep your sides lined up. Um, just going to do a little back stitch there. Okay, and then off we go. Carry on right to the top, the envelope flap, obviously with the flap open. I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to make sure, like I said, my needle is over on that left hand side and then turn with the flap still open. Come down this side to the end, obviously. What I'm doing now is nowhere near straight, but what I'm doing now is I'm keeping this edge of the paper lined up with that edge of my sewing machine foot. So it's nowhere near straight and it's all over the place, but that's my guy and I'm reasonably happy with it. <laughs> I'm not going to sew across the bottom of the envelope because it's folded up and it's shut anyway. So I'm going to get to the end. 
here and then I am going to backstage. Excuse me guys, sorry. There we go. Just stick you with that. And be careful. See this is where I went wrong on the last one and ripped the envelope and it's by getting all of this and pulling to take the thread out. But this music paper is very fragile because it's vintage, so instead I'm just going to use my scissors to cut the thread. Normally I pull it off to the side because just that there is a little um, like thread cutter so normally I would pull it to the side and use that to cut the thread but like I said this music paper is very fragile so behave yourself thread I am getting very very low on this thread and I don't have any more of this colour so I hope it lasts me to the end of this project just put them threads off there and then we have our envelope so now we're going to deal with this bit on the flap and again just open your flap up and so round. You can also, I did on this one, I sewed across the top of the flap, which you can do. So we've done this bit, but when the flap is closed, I, uh, on my other one, sewed across there, just for a bit of extra decoration. So I'm going to do that on this one too. Sometimes it helps to fold your flap back on itself just to reinforce that crease so you know. And I'm going to use that as the guide for my foot. So that crease is lined up with this edge of my foot now, not this edge. Or thereabouts anyway. Sorry guys, I've suddenly got sniffles. I think it's we're sorting the thread out. Dust up my nose. Okay, I'm not going to bother back stitching on that bit because it's only just for fancy anyway. Carefully. I'm nowhere near straight with that either. Oh my goodness, absolutely nowhere near straight. <laughs> oh dear me, see what I mean. And yet I have a project that I did sewing wise. And even on camera, I wasn't talking though, but even on camera, and it's absolutely perfect. The stitching and everything is just spot on. I couldn't have got it any better if I had actually tried. <laughs> but anyway, so now with the flap open, obviously otherwise you're going to sew it shut. Do not sew around this flappy bit while the flap is shut because then obvious reasons you will sew your flap shut. So keep the flap open and then sew around this material bit and I must say that uhu glue has actually tacked that down very 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 well that's surprised me is that and again we will do this little bit keeping the needle in the left turn I'm not going all the way to the bottom because that's frayed. I'm trying to stay on the actual material the material part. I will throw this material thing and you can see the paper through it. Okay, keeping it to the left and turn and I'll show that in a minute, why I do that in a minute. Oh my gosh, this is like crazy. And, yeah, 
back stitches on that, but I don't think it's necessary. And then, again, like I said, because this bit of spread gel, I'll pull that out. And we are done. Done and done for the sewing machine, which I'm sure some of you will be happy about. So I will now turn that off and take you back over to the desk area. Okay, so we're back at the desk. I just had a heart attack moment then and I actually thought that none of that had filmed. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm devastated. But we are back at the desk. Um, ignore that. That was just after I'd um, sorted the thread back out. I always do a test so just to make sure because I have a habit of putting the bottom bobbin in upside down so it doesn't sew right. Um, but yeah, that's what that was. But makes a good scrap of paper for something else so that will actually actually I'll put that in here um yep use that for another project at some stage no doubt okay so what are where are we up to now so we did this which is our um little anchor that we're going to use to anchor the tag um and where are we up to now? So, right, the envelope. We've done the envelope. Um, I'll just get rid of some threads on that because there's too many. Okay, and I apologise for the sniffling. Um, changing the threads on the sewing machine has, for some reason, seems to have disturbed the air and puffed up some fluff or some dust or something and I can't stop sniffling now so I apologise in advance but anyway we have our envelope all sewn up the only difference is with this one I didn't sew across the bottom there because you know it's already folded you know you sew across the bottom of there and then you're going to lose another what half an inch quarter of an inch half an inch worth of storage space so it's not necessary it looks fancy but it's not necessary um but there so we have the beginnings of our envelope now you could like i've done on this one just for a little bit of fancy i've sewn around the edges on a straight stitch but then i went across the middle with a zigzag stitch whereas this one i have sewn around the whole thing on a zigzag stitch I could have gone across the middle there with a zigzag stitch too, but I didn't. Um, it's not necessary. I just did it for fancy on that one. But yeah. So now what we are going to do is attach our tag and the anchor for the tag. So I will zoom you in just a tad. And I will remember I am, after I try and remember I am zoomed in. Um, I'll try and stay within this area of the craft mat. Just one second, guys, I need a drink. Mm. Excuse me, I really needed that. Now, like I said, we'll deal with this later. So, put that to one side, we're now going to work on a tag now these I already had made up I did not make them I have packets of them made up um, but as I am aware going off the last video not everybody is going to have eyelet, like a crocodile to put eyelets and stuff in so they already had them in but I'm aware that people aren't going to ha always have them and I'm also aware that people aren't always going to have tag punches or even hole punches and then this project you don't need one this is a ready-made tag however like I said in the in beginning part of this video I'm going to show you how to make your own this was made with the tag punch but I am now going to show you how to make one of your own again I don't really want to oh, I don't really want to give you measurements because your width here might be different to mine it depends on how big your envelope is so 
obviously there is no point me telling you you need a tag that is three inches wide if you've only got a tiny envelope and because your paper's smaller you're doing this but on a smaller scale and it's gonna be overpower your page this however is one and a half inch wide and then like I said if you have this tab punch by all means use it I used it one and a half inch wide to get that shape but what I am going to do is wing it basically if you have a tag already you may this is a bit big for this but you may use your tag shape but for anybody new to this I am totally going to wing it there is other ways you can do it if you have a craft mat a cutting mat like this you can line it up with the squares and I will zoom you right in for this right so you can see and I'm looking through the camera now I have lined it up with the square and then you can use your ruler and I'll get my small one out and angle your ruler across diagonally that square there which creates the corner in fact, that's what we will do. No, well, no, I won't, but anyway. Yeah, but you can do that. Or you can just wing it. You can just look and go, I want that off. Sorry. And then don't panic thinking, oh no, I've done that, but how, how am I going to get that over there now? Oh, sugar. Yeah, you've cut one edge of your tag, one side of your tag, but how are you going to get it to line up with the other edge because you haven't measured? Well, it's simple. Keep your cut off and you've taken it off there. Then all you need to do is just turn it over and take it off that side. So I'll line it up in the corner, make sure it lines up corner to corner, which you probably can't see because it's the same colour, and then cut. So you're using this little scrap as a guide. Make sure you've got it right. I mean, there is only a right, there is only one way you can do it, really. I mean, you can't, obviously, if you line it up that corner to corner you know that that's not the right shape so line it up until you get it in the right shape so there to there and then use that as your cutting guide to do that side never <laughs> oh dear me that is a pathetic tag shape but it'll do Okay, I am actually just going to cut a little bit extra off the top of there. That's better, that makes it more... Oh my gosh, it's not even straight. But, it'll do. That looks better. That looks more of a tag shape than it did earlier. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, this camera's struggling with this. Craft card stock. Yeah. But that's what you do, guys very poorly explained but that's what you do chop a corner off and then flip your corner over and use it to do the other corner and then if it looks too pointy like mine did just cut a bit off the top yeah <laughs> and then again don't need to measure actually that is a perfect size but i don't like the way that that is taller than that so let me zoom you back out a little bit because I am completely forgetting where you are. But yeah, so it's a perfect length for that. Great. But I don't like how this is longer than this piece of material. So what I'm going to do is try and line the top of my tag up with the top of my material. And then... Roughly 
with the bottom. No, 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 sorry. You want it shorter because then you've got to put your ruffle in. Right, so about the half an inch shorter. You want it about half, half an inch shorter than your material or not. If you want it that wide, that long, you do it that long. But, pardon me. I'm going to do it that way. And then I am actually going to line up because my measure, my cutting skills are atrocious. Freehand cutting skills are literally atrocious as you've just seen. So I'm just going to do that and then cut. You can use a paper trimmer, but I can't be bothered doing that. It means getting everything out, moving all this stuff off the, my paper trimmer is actually here at the side. Um, but it's got my gluing book and everything else on it. I do have others over there, but ignore that, ignore that. Okay, so my tag is now made from a scrap piece of paper card. Well, it's actually card craft cardstock, and this is very thick cardstock. But it's made, okay? And it's shorter for a reason, because I'm going to line this up with the bottom of that. And then the tag sits in it. Okay, now we was talking about a brad and a hole punch. If you have a hole puncher, by all means use it. If not, just roughly, you can measure, but where's the fun in that? Okay, oh, well actually, that measures quite well. So, around there. And then you don't need, and if you have a pokey tool, if you have a beading all, or, well, not even a beading all, a pokey tool. Most people, if you are journalists watching this, you will have one of these anyway, because you will need it to bind your books, poke it through. If not, if you push hard enough, your brad will poke through that hole. It's just a little bit more precise if you have a pokey tool. Okay, and then push your brad through and there you have it it's a bit close to the top compared to the others but it doesn't matter and then line up where you want it to go so keep it on and then just gently pull your flap up so that it pokes the brad pokes through the flap and then open it up on the other side that was like the worst explanation ever weren't it did that even make any sense, guys? Right. I know I've done it, but put your brad on, well, line your tag up roughly where you want it to be, and then not pushing right through, just lay it on top and then pull the flap up under the brad until the brad pokes through. A split pin brad, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm just going to turn that sideways because that's how I like them and then open it up underneath on the reverse side if you have fingernails you can use them if not use um, your ruler or use a craft knife just to get in between there we go that one was actually quite difficult to open unusual they're not usually that bad I can usually do it with my nails but there you go open it up be careful because they can be sharp okay so there we are guys there we go there's your swingy bit looking good I hope you're following along so far my tutorials are rubbish why are you guys even watching them <laughs> Oh, do you mean? Okay, so there you go. Could have been more that way, more centralised, but I won't lose sleep over it. Now, what have I done with my paper ruffle? There it is. Okay. So now, this is going to be my anchor. And I'm going to line up the bottom of this 
roughly with the bottom of that and make sure there's still plenty of room can you see there's a gap can you see so I'm going to glue along the bottom of here which gives plenty of clearance for this to swing in and out and this is where your wet glue comes in I wouldn't use glue stick for this I don't think it would be strong enough um, and I am going to use art glitter glue for this because I love art glitter glue for this it dries it really quick and you literally just need one little bead of glue across the bottom that is it you can have a little bit of a thicker bead if you prefer but it is not necessary and then obviously make sure that's going to glue down the bottom side straighten your tag out and then glue that down and then take your tag out before you glue the tag to that <laughs> and that is it that is it that literally is it guys it's done you've made your envelope and I'm stuck up You've sewn the envelope, you've, well, you've created the envelope shape, you've sewn the material to it, you've sewn around the envelope, you've put your tag on, and you've just created your tag anchor, your closure. And we are done. Oh, goodness sake, sorry, I forgot. And we are done. Very basic, but we are done. Then it is entirely up to you whether you decorate the back. This, I would refer to as the back to me this is the front of the envelope it is the focal point so this is my front of the envelope so to me this needs to be the oh wow part um because this is either going to just something like this i would maybe attach under a belly band or it's very rarely going to fit in a journal this way so it could go in that direction um but I'd paper clip it on so but this would still be the front I would still class this as the front or what you could do is glue it so that your flap opens that way or that way glue it to a page I would probably be tempted to paper clip it in though or just use it as is I've been using mine for storage really just fancy storage so but that is it guys that's your sword version sewn version yeah you're doing all right there um yeah so that is the sewn version of it it's done basically that's it guys so yeah um i probably explained it rubbish there's probably more tutorials out there like this. I haven't seen anybody do this, but then again, I haven't been looking. It's not something I've seen somebody do and gone, oh, I'll, I'll do that. But it's also probably not an original idea. I may have seen a, something, a technique similar somewhere else before that's given me the idea, but it's just something I was playing around with the, last month and thought, oh, I'll do that. So... If anybody knows anybody who's pre done it previously, then by all means let me know below in the comments. But otherwise, like I said, it's not my original idea because it's an idea I had, but I, it's probably not original. It's probably been done many times before. But yes, so there you go. And then, like I said, it's entirely up to you whether you decorate the, the other side. I don't think I did with these, did I? Yes, I did with this one. I did, I did, I did. That's the one we did last video, the no saw version. That was the prototype of the no saw one to make sure I got it right. And I did decorate the other side. I decoupaged some napkin there in the four corners and that was a um, out of a 12 by 12 scrapbooking piece of cardstock, paper pad. And it. I had a page in that scrapbook. In the, Oh my goodness. I had a page in that paper pack where they had labels and stuff to cut out which i did they're actually all here um, they're all in this box everything that was on that there's two sheets and everything that was on them two sheets of stuff i fussy cut out i didn't need to but i did a fussy cut them out love this bird 
absolutely love that bird um but yeah so that's what that was but again you don't need to you can leave it plain you may obviously if you've made your own tag like i've just done here you may decorate it um embellish it or whatever actually that's what i was going to do i was going to emboss it um but that means getting the die cut machine out and everything else and again some of you may not have embossers um die cut yeah die cutters to be able to emboss so anyway so that is the big envelope and i will now just turn off compose myself <laughs> this is <all> <laughs> exhausting <laughs> compose myself and then i will come back and we will make this tiny mini as a um bonus and i will decorate the back with you um, yes, and we will be sewing on this one too, but it won't take long. Okay, so I will be back in a minute. <music> 